Hello, this is lesson 3.8, Sorting Elements Based on Chemical Properties. We are going to look at the organization of the modern periodic table, specifically the long version of it, and figure out how to write noble gas notations for F and D block elements. Then we are going to look at representative elements, transition elements, inner transition elements, alkali metals, alkaline earth metals, halogens and noble gases and look at their chemical and physical properties. So the main idea again in this uh, lesson is that the periodic table is the most important tool in chemistry and we are learning about the structure and the properties of elements and their uh, valence electron numbers that are embedded within the periodic table. So here is the periodic table I showed you in lesson 3.7 with the S block shown here, the D P block shown here in purple and in green the D block and in turquoise light blue the F block. F block actually fits in right here between uh, this is 3, 4, 5 and 6d right here after the d1 electrons fill here it goes in here it actually looks like that so these two guys scoot over here and this section is pushed off so let's see how the electrons fill so for example this element the noble gas notation is written with the noble gas that comes before him xenon 6s2 5d1 and the next one, CE, is written as xenon 6s25d14f1. one one. And let's look at another element, this one way off at the end. So you have filled all 14f electrons. So the electron configuration is like this. Note all of them have one 5d. It's after you fill LU that you end up filling the other electrons in D like here. So this one has 5D2. Let's look at the bottom row. So there's AC. Its electron configuration starts with radon and uh, it's 7S2, 6D1. Just like this shell is one higher. And then the next one, just like this shell is one higher. And this one, LR, is going to be just like this one shell higher. And I hope now you have a good understanding of how to write electron configurations for uh, D and F block elements. Let's move on to the next. So in purple, I have shown you the D block elements. And then in yellow, I have shown you the F block elements, and they are called inner transition elements. And they both have variable numbers of valence electrons, and they can make several different ions. And here we have the S and the P block combined between columns 1, 2, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 or group 1a, 2a, 3a, 4a, 5a, 6a, 7a, 8a, the a group numbers correspond to their valence electron numbers, hence the name representative elements. These guys are S and P block elements. Their valence electron number is exactly the same as their a group number. Now let's look at their properties. So here are our representative elements. Based on the type of element, can be a metal, non-metal, or a metalloid. And these guys are metalloids. Everybody down here are non-metals. Everybody on this side are metals. Valence electron configuration can be... Uh, so if N is the shell number, groups 1 and 2 will be... Uh, NS1 or NS2. So this column is NS1. They all have one electron. These guys have two electrons. Now these guys all have the NS2 electrons plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6p electrons except helium. He has only 
NS2 electron configuration. And their number, valence electron number, is the same as their group A number. To make ions, group 1 to 2 A elements, these guys donate their electrons. But groups 5 to 7 A elements, these guys 5, 6, 7 A elements, they take electrons. Group 4 can donate electrons or donate 4 or take 4. Now group 3, they uh, also donate electrons. Now group 8 are inert. They typically don't donate or take electrons. At room temperature, group 8 are monoatomic gases, all except OG, as you will see. Now group 7 Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen are diatomic gases, and iodine is a liquid, and uh, other elements in this section are solids. So, if you look at transition metals, the D block, they are groups 3 to 12 over here in the 18 groups of the periodic table. They are all metals. They have valent electron configurations of various kinds. So, 3 to 4 D subshells, that is here and here. They have NS2, N-1, D1 to 10 electron configuration. Here's an example of niobium, this guy over here. He has, he's in 4 D uh, shell. And he has three electrons, so I wrote 4d3. So his s subshell is one greater than that. So it should be 5s2. And then if you look at another example of an element that's between 5 and 60 subshells, its electron configuration will have f electrons in addition to this one. So here is gold, which goes over here. Gold has... This is 3, 4, 5, D, 9 electrons. So it's 5, D, 9 here. It's F will be 6s2. And the F will be 2 less than 6s2. So 4F14 because all the 14 electrons are filled. Number of valence electrons for these guys vary. Each element readily donates the 2s electrons I have shown you over here. And some can donate some of the D electrons as well. And they all become cations. Remember, all metals become cations by donating electrons. At room temperature, all of these metals are solid except the very toxic mercury. Uh, inner transition metals, they are F-block elements. They all have properties of metals. Their valence shell electron configuration is NS2, N-1, D1. And N minus 2, F can be 1 to 14. And here is an example of HO, this element with 67 protons. So it's in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 F. So 10 F electrons. So this will be its valence electron configuration. Number of valence electrons again varies for these guys. Each element readily donates just like D the 2s electrons and can make only cations. Some even donate variable numbers of D, of D or F electrons. At room temperature, all of these guys are solids. Side note, just to help you remember the diatomic gases, remember have no fear of ice cold beer. That will help you remember all the diatomic gases. Anyway, now let's compare and contrast alkali metals and alkaline earth metals. Alkali metals are group 1 elements and alkaline earth metals, the longer name is for the second group, they have S2 electron configuration. They are uh, also in S block. So things in common, they are very shiny, white and soft. They can be cut with a knife. As you go down the group, they get harder to cut. They have low electron affinity and electronegativity, relatively low melting and boiling points, 
They are good conductors of electricity and they are extremely reactive. It's very important for you to remember that. We will do a lab with group 1A, sodium, potassium and lithium soon. So let's look at alkali metals. They are group 1A. Their valence electron configuration as I have shown here is S1 and they readily lose that one electron to form plus one cations. They are very reactive so they are stored in oil as shown over here so that they won't react with oxygen in the air. And they are very explosive when you react them with water forming the corresponding brace or hydroxide. We also call that alkali. So here's uh, the chemical reaction for sodium solid reacting with two moles of water, two moles of sodium hydroxide, which is a base or an alkali. It's dissolved in water, so it's aqueous and it produces hydrogen gas. So you see a bubbling gas and hydrogen gas is very flammable. If you light a, can, a lighter match, it will pop. So some uses, lithium is used for lithium ion batteries, fireworks, it makes that beautiful red flame you saw, antidepressants, sodium is used for table salt, sodium lamps, fertilizers, soap and electrolytes. And let's look at our alkali metals, alkaline earth metals. Um, valence electron configuration is NS2. They readily lose two electrons forming plus two cations. They are less reactive than group one. They react with water just like group one forming the corresponding base hydroxide or alkali. The chemical reaction is very much the same but these are slightly less reactive than group 1a element. Their uses, magnesium and calcium are used as micronutrients for plants and humans. Calcium is used in cement, drywall, and strontium and barium are used in fireworks. Uh, radon is used for radiation therapy. And note that radon gas is a form of uranium decay that seeps out from underground and accumulates in basement rooms. And it's a major cause of lung cancer. So if one of you is in a basement room, make sure you open your window and have a fan running with the window open. It's a good practice to have your windows open once in a while throughout the year, whether you live in a basement or not. Okay, uh, sixth topic are halogens. These are the group 7A elements. I've shown you a picture of them. Their electron configuration is S2P5. So the N is the same for both of them. They have seven valence electrons. And so their valence electron configuration, when you add the two and the five, you get seven. They readily gain one electron from a donor atom. Now losing seven is a lot harder than gaining one. So if they gain one, they look like the nearest noble gas, and that's what they do. They form negative one anions, like Cl minus. We do not write minus one, we just write minus, or F minus for fluoride ion. They are very reactive elements. They form salts with group 1A and 2A elements. They form ionic compounds. Salts are ionic compounds. At room temperature, chlorine, Cl2 and F2, fluorine gas, are diatomic gases. Bromine is a liquid and iodine and astatine are solids. All can form diatomic covalent molecules in element state. Some have strong odor like chlorine and bromine. You have smelled chlorine when you smell bleach. And some have a bright color. Chlorine is a yellow green gas. It was used in, I think, World War I to kill people. It's toxic. Bromine is a brown substance. It's a gas. Iodine is a purple, a purplish black substance. Here are your diatomic molecules, just to remind you. They are all very electron greedy elements. If F fluorine, up here on the top is the most electronegative, electron greedy element in the periodic table. As you go down in the column, 
electron greediness slightly decreases. Let's look at their uses. And here is chlorine, here's bromine, and here's iodine. Uh, chlorine is used in table salt, uh, and so is sodium. And chlorine is used for whitening, bleaching, and disinfection. It's required for thyroid function. If you don't get enough iodine, you get this enlarged thyroid gland, which we call a goiter. This is not very common now. And then we use fluoride for uh, healthy teeth and toothpaste. It's also added in your municipality water. Now we are going to look at our last group, noble gases. And they are group 8A or 18. They all have eight valence electrons except for helium has only two valence electrons. Their typical electron configuration is ns2 and p6. I have written it over here very inert or unreactive because the highest energy level orbitals are completely filled with electrons so they are very stable they have no desire to gain or lose electrons so every other element want to obtain noble gas electron configurations but these guys are not interested in that all except organism are monoatomic gases the guy down here at room temperature OG is a solid at RT. They are all odorless and colorless. These elements have the largest ionization energies due to the fully occupied valence electrons. Ionization energy is the energy required to remove one valence electron. If all the valence electrons are filled in a sub energy level, it's very hard to remove them. So here are some of the uses. They are used in uh, fluorescent light bulbs, lasers, voltage detectors, luminous warnings, advertising signs like this sign over here, helium balloons. OG is the only synthetic noble gas and the element with the highest atomic number. And with that, let's look at the review. And here are our alkali metals, alkaline earth metals and our d-block transition elements and our inner transition elements, our metalloids, our halogens, and our noble gases. And let's look at the, uh, these guys are non-metals, these guys are metals, and these are their electron configurations in the valence shell, and these guys have ns2 and p5, ns2 and p6 and these guys are called representative elements and these guys have valence shell electron configurations as i've shown here and here is our summary i'll see you in the next video please do the 3.8 exit ticket thank you